Hello. I am going to make meatloaf and baked potatoes for us today. But I wanted to show you first the um, note I had from my honey bunny. It started out, he cut these out of the boxes of stuff we had. It said honey. Ice cream bars. He had it all in, arranged in a and ah uh, our ah uh, crackers and then he signed it honey <laughs> he got it all off the boxes so really how he had it was honey um crackers ah uh, ice cream bars and then he signed it honey so I'm guessing from that that he wants some more ice cream bars. I'm just guessing. So yeah, I'm going to make a meatloaf uh, today. And gosh, I don't mean to be on here every day, but I figure if I'm making something, I could just be on here and make it. But what we're, we've decided to have is a meatloaf and um, baked potatoes and probably some green beans. Let me get me some paper towels. <clears throat> My daughter was going to the store, so I told her that I wanted, we wanted, he wanted some ice cream bars and I wanted some Klondike bars. And if you see this, Mary Lou, I'm telling on you. And when I got one out to eat it after our dinner, we just ate the rest of the pizza. Not the rest of it, but what we could eat because we didn't want to waste it. And so I thought I'll have a Klondike bar. And I got it out and I looked at it. and I looked at the label. It said, no sugar added. And thank you, Amy. And so when I got his ice cream bar out, it said fudge sickles. Well, that's my favorite, not his. So I wrote to my daughter and I said, do you see anything wrong with this picture? <laughs> and I sent her the picture and she said, oh, I, I thought for sure I had the regular ones. And I said, no, there are no sugar added. And I said, your dad wanted ice cream bars and you got fudge sickles. She goes, mom, I could have swore I had ice cream bars in my hand. Well, she's always in a hurry because she works and has a three-year-old and two teenagers. So I understand. But the next thing I wrote her was a joke. I said, uh, I don't know how you could be so mean to me and your dad by giving us sugar-free stuff and, and not what we want. <laughs> And then I put LLO to let her know we, I was okay with that because they were pretty good. You know, I ate one. It, it wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't bad. But anyway, neither one of us have sugar problems. So, you know, we, we don't go overboard on it, but we, we have our times when we will like it. So anyway, I'm going to use my... Um, Tupperware lasagna pan because it's got a lid and when I first put the meatloaf in the oven I want that lid on there so that's what I'm going to be using and I don't have to put any oil or anything now this is the way I did it in the restaurant okay and then I kind of added a couple things but what I do is I take would take the bread and this is older bread I just opened a new one so my husband will eat any kind of bread but this old-fashioned loaf. When we went on our vacation in North Carolina to the Outer Banks, I told my son, I said, get some, you know, Heiner's, the red pack bread, old-fashioned. They didn't sell it. I found out they only sold it in Ohio. So next time off, take some. So anyway, let me get in here and just wipe this out real good. Even there's been a lid on it. And I've got a lot of uh, hamburger that I thawed out, so, and we like meatloaf, so we can eat on that with different 
with different things and you know he can eat a sandwich or whatever he wants so I'm just gonna take that bread and if you don't have one of these or anything to chop with just do it with your hands that's all you gotta do and that's the way I did it in the restaurant with my hands just chopped it up or broke it up and once you put the other ingredients in that I'm gonna be putting in you're not gonna to need to really chop it fine anyway but I'm going to use this because it'll chop it for me. And this bread is just a tad bit stale, so, because we're not eating. He eats a lot more bread than I do. So that's the bread. Um, I'm gonna chop that up. And then let me tell you, I don't know what happened to me, but when my granddaughter went into Army National Guards and had to go through that hard training, I ate peanut butter and butter sandwiches. That's all I ate. I craved them. That's all I ate. I was so concerned and praying all the time and crying because she's been a part of my life since she's been a newborn baby and always lived in this town. I just ate peanut butter and butter. I never ate nothing else. And now I'm over that. <laughs> I'm over that, and um, I don't don't want it anymore. But she's home, so I'm just going to chop that up a little bit in this uh, Power Chef. And this is my old one; it's not the new one I showed you yesterday. Okay, see, some of these pieces aren't even cut real good, but I don't; they don't have to be. And I'm going to. Oh, I want to show you guys something. Let me show you something. See that blue bowl there with the potatoes in it? That was the bowl I was looking for yesterday. Yep. That was the bowl I was looking for yesterday. And guess what? It was right out in my kitchen on that little stand. That. And I tell you, I don't know what's wrong with this staying in stuff. It's got me... I should have known that was sitting there. I put potatoes in it. Take potatoes out of it. So I'm going to put this in this bowl. The breadcrumbs. And I used... Now I'm using probably... Two and a half to three pounds of hamburger. Because... Um, I'll probably take some over to my friend, Mary. And drop it off. But that's why I'm using it. Because it all was in one pack. And I throwed it in the freezer like that. So... Now, I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to put in this three eggs. Nice brown eggs. My pastor sent me some more eggs yesterday. <laughs> So I got that in there. Now, I'm just going to take and mix that up a little bit in that bowl. And the next thing that we're going to put in is something that will take care of that bread if you have to just chunk it bigger. That's why I didn't make it real fine because I wanted you to see. So you mix that up. And let me get the salt and pepper. I forgot it. My husband was sitting at the table and he was getting, he was on the phone and feeding the, putting the dog food on the thing at the same time. So I didn't get everything out. So see, you got your egg and your um, crumbs mixed up. And then you're going to put about a half to a cup of milk. That's about two-thirds cup. Stir that up. So you stir that up. Oh, it wasn't none of my tools, it was my drink. Apologize again. 
Okay, I got that. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of minced garlic to that. Just a little bit, not much. I got that in a jar. And then I'm going to cut up the onion to put in it. Excuse me. Boy, she isn't with it today at all. I got up real early this morning and watched something with my husband, and I haven't been myself. Oh, yeah, Cracker Barrel. I, I don't think I've ever had their meatloaf. You have it in West Virginia, that kind of bread. That's nice. So I'm going to just cut these onions up. Remember I had the other night? This onion smells good. It's like, right, how does an onion smell good? It does, to me. I'm just going to chop that up on this little red board. Later, I'm going to make us a dessert. I'm not sure if I'm going to make the um, oh, apple fritters. Homemade apple fritters. They're really good, and the kids can get... I don't have any kids here, but if you have kids at home, they can get involved in it and teach them how to make it. Uh, I used to have my grandsons over here. I know one time... I think there was, I, I always tried to do something with the granddaughters. We made pies, and then the grandsons, and the grandsons, we made apple fritters. And they are, the homemade ones are delicious and so easy to make. So easy. So I've got a few apples that I want to get cut up and used, so I'm thinking apple fritters tonight. I know Tom will like them. He likes the big um, apple fritters you get in the bakeries. Well, these are not as big, but they can be. It's just I've never made them as big. Now, I could have put this onion right in that chopper and had that done, huh? Never thought about it. It would have chopped it real fine for me. But I'm feeling kind of choppy today, so I'll have to chop it up myself. Probably everybody's got a chopper in their house somewhere. And the next, uh, in within the next week, I think I will make um, some chicken and noodles. The way I can take Mary some. She called me to, to a little bit ago. Went on and on and on about that potato soup and pie. She said, I'm not jealous or anything. She said, but I've never tasted soup this good. I've made it and put stuff in it. And, and I told her about how Valerie and Nancy Hawk told me to put the heavy cream. So that's what I did. And I said, that might have been the difference, that and the ham. She said, I got your pie plate washed up and I've got your bowl you brought the your Tupperware bowl you bought brought the stuff in and I've got it all washed up and ready for you. I said, well I'll bring you something else and then I'll pick up the other bowls. We used to take her to Golden Crow and her and my husband loved going there. We'd take her over there and she'd just love it. So I think that's good enough, you know. I... Cut it up a little bit more. Keep that on the cutting board. Woo. 
Oops, I think I better stop cutting. It's flying. Flying onions. So I'm just going to take these onions here and put down in here. That looks like a lot of onions and it probably is, but I want to use that part of the onion that I haven't used. So I'm going to do that. And remember we have the garlic. So you got your bread, your eggs, your garlic, and your uh, milk, a little bit of milk and that milk is what makes it not so tough okay and now i've got the onions and i don't have um i do not have the peppers i don't have any peppers so i'm just going to take this hamburger that i've got opened up which is big and put it in there. <laughs> I bought this when I bought the five for 20. They had the big pack of hamburger you could get so it's $19.99, but you might as well say five for 20. It's 80.20. Let me wash my hands off. So there's the hamburger we're gonna put in it. And um, let me think here, because I put stuff on the top too. Okay, we're going to put some ketchup. That's probably about a half a cup. Because I'm going to do this. Um, let me think how I done that last time. Okay, that's what we're going to do. I was thinking, why do I have that tomato sauce out? But that comes out later. Now we want to just put some salt and pepper in that. There's not much in here, so I'm just going to put it in. And not much salt, so I'm going to put it in. I'll have to fill them back up. So we're just going to mix this all up in this big red bowl. Squishy, squishy, squishy. That's pretty good. I got some more stuff to make them. Uh, biscuits, Margaret. Um, so I'll probably end up making more of them too. But I got some, um, a two ingredient pizza crust recipe I want to try. It takes yolk, uh, plain white yogurt and self-rising flour. But I'm trying to think, let me take that ring off. I'm trying to think whether I want to try to make a garlic crust out of that or what. It took us two nights just to eat the pizza I made. Punch that down in there and mix it up really good. 
And I used to make this for the restaurant. And we'd have baked potato and meatloaf and green beans. But I want us to have some meatloaf today. Make sure that's mixed up really good. And I was going to make the meatballs, um, but I didn't. I thought I'm going to make meatloaf. Meatballs, you just put canned milk in and different stuff a little bit. You, uh, your sauce on top goes, it uh, has smoked. Um, that's the scanner, sorry. Somebody was in a wreck this morning about 15 miles from here in another little town we go to. But, um, yeah, I thought, decide not to do the meatballs. Because <laughs> it makes a lot of meatballs. And with the meatloaf, I could... Uh, take it and cut it up a little bit and put some uh, manicotti noodles or something like that in it. If I don't, you know, if I want to. Let me get this all off of me because I can't stand it. It comes from growing up from a mother that always made you wash your elbows and your hands and your knees real good so they wouldn't turn. Remember mom scrubbing them elbows, teaching us how to scrub our elbows and our hands and our ankles and I remember her saying, if you ever get in a fix, just make sure you wash your two faces and go on. So, okay, here is the pan I'm going to use and there's a whole bowl of meatloaf so I'm going to shape this see that big meatloaf I'm going to shape it in there I want to shape it to where the top won't on the lid won't hit it just kind of pat it put it in together this pan's going to be full of meatloaf. So what I'll do is I'll wrap or put the potatoes. Tom said you can bake them, boil them, anything you want to do. But I think I'm going to bake them and have a baked potato with sour cream or something on it and cheese. Usually I sit it in my hand and smack it but I'm not going to do that because with the milk in it, it I might smack it onto the floor because it's not as tough as the without the milk with the milk as it is without okay I think I've got that patted down pretty good let me test this lid out goes pretty high on the lasagna pan so yeah I'll be able to use that really good so I can move it up a little bit more. I like the way they have that up a little higher so you don't have to hit your food when you're putting that lid on. I use this all the time. Because I don't have to oil it and everything else and it cleans up real good. That's what I like. Something that cleans up. When we use the glass, it, you, it, you have to scrape it off and everything else. So this meatloaf is good, looking like this. It does look good and it smells good. Um, Kimberly, that sounds good. I think we will tomorrow probably have a meatloaf sandwich. And this was something my grand... Uh, sons really liked. I 
when they'd come home from school. My granddaughters are more for the noodles. <laughs> okay, so we got this in there and it, it's looking not bad. So now I'm gonna get that off my hands again. You know that bench I showed you over there with the um, with the big bulls on it? I gotta tell you something. All of my kids was here. I don't know if it was Thanksgiving or what it was, but I had just bought that bench off of a friend and I was going to use it just for show because it was like one of them little Amish benches and that's what it was for. And we all was sitting around and my husband, he got that bench and he was um, sitting, gonna sit on it. And we didn't know it. We just thought he got an out, you know, for the kids. And my son told him, he said, here, take your office chair and sit in it. But my husband's really a good, courteous person. You know, he's very honorable when he has company. And, um, so he had sat down on that bench and behind the chair and <laughs> this is not funny but <laughs> thank god he was all right that bench just broke right out from under him because you it wasn't one to just sit on so there he went down and my son went and i went looked down and there he was he's on the floor his head was in the dog food and it scared me. I mean, my heart jumped right out of my chest almost. I, I, and it scared my son too. And he just looked at him. He said, are you all right? He was fine. I think it happened so quick. He didn't have time to think about if he's all right or not. And you know what he said? He said, I'm sorry about breaking your bench. I said, I don't care about that bench. I care about you. And so he took that bench in the garage and now it's back out here, but guess what? He enforced that bench. It's got two by fours on the bottom, and he enforced it. I mean, it, it you can sit on that thing now and never fall off. <laughs> so he brought it back out. I didn't think I was ever gonna see it again. I didn't care, but he, he brought it back out and enforced it. Cindy buys the instant packets in the store. I like the gold ones. They taste so much like the real. Um, what we did in the restaurant, if we got in a pinch, uh, Cindy, we would put instant potatoes in and cook them, but we would put sour cream and butter in them. The sour cream and butter made them taste real, and you couldn't hardly tell the difference at all. So, and I liked them, and I don't like fake stuff, but. It, uh, it'll make them taste really good if you put sour cream butter in them. Mayonnaise biscuits today. I added a recipe and they turned out okay. Wow, Cindy, I, I'm, I wished you would have done it live. I'd like to see that recipe. Uh, I think I made mayonnaise rolls one time or something in the back of the cabin. That was 30 years ago, but not biscuits. So anyway, here we are. Now, we're gonna make a sauce to go over that. And I'm just gonna mix it up in my little chopper. Um, see what I've done with the, there it is. I'm gonna put ketchup. And see, this sauce will go over the top while it's cooking, but it also, the last 15 minutes, it will. I was telling a friend yesterday, I said, there's two things I never run out, is ketchup and toilet paper. Always make sure I've got plenty and mustard. Okay, I got about a cup of ketchup and a little can of tomato sauce. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of paprika in that. About a teaspoon of paprika. A little bit of garlic. Not the other kind, but this kind. Okay. Then, 
me put this over there. I'm going to re or I want to put a little mustard in. You can put Dijon or this. Come on. And then, and you could flavor it the way you want it. Now, I'm going to put just a tad bit of this, not much. Old Bay seasoning, not much. You're going to see this. Well, if it comes out, I'm afraid I'll get too much in there. I'm only putting a fourth a teaspoon in because it scares me. Then I'm going to put some good stuff in here to make that more of a barbecue. And what I do with my um, brown sugar is I always put an old piece of bread or a piece of bread and it dries out, but it keeps your sugar real moist. I hate dry powdered sugar. So I'm going to put, here we go with the sugar again. What's this? Uh, one fourth a cup of powdered sugar in that and a tad bit more. Then, let's see, I'm going to put the Worcestershire sauce in. Yeah, I got a lot of Old Bay. Did I just put a little bit? Your Worcestershire sauce, if you can, how do you really say this? Worcestershire Shire sauce? Worcestershire shower, Shire? You know what I mean. We'll put some of that in there. About a tablespoon or more. And then I'm just going to mix all this up. And that's going to make a luscious sauce over that. That tomato sauce is going to give it that tomatoey taste without the all ketchup taste. The brown sugar is going to bring out, and the mustard is going to bring out the barbecue. It's like not real barbecue, but the really good barbecue taste. And I got the little bit of a spices in there. I'm thinking here. A little more ketchup. You don't have to do it that way, but I like sweet and savory. A little bit of that. Now I'm just going to mix all that up together here. And this is what will go over your meatloaf. But the good thing is you're going to bake this in with your lid on or your foil or whatever. You're going to bake some of this in the top. And then you're going to bake this on 350 for uh, 50 minutes. And then you're going to take it out of the oven and put the rest of the sauce, ooze it down over, leave your lid off. Hi, Carol. Leave your lid off, and then that's going to bake all in there. It's going to make a beautiful, stable sauce, okay? But this first batch you put on, it's going to run over there like that. And you're going to save some, your other half for when it's 15 minutes. You're going to bake this for 50 minutes with the lid on. Like that. And that's going to bake right on top of that. And then this little bit here that I have left, I'll just set it over here and I will put it on after I bake this in the oven for 50 minutes. And then I'll put that on after that's baked into that, then I'll put the rest on for the sauce top and I'll leave the lid off and then that'll bake all real good on there and it'll be all real nice and together and beautiful and tasty and all that good stuff. So. I'm going to get off of here, and um, 
I'm going to go ahead and throw this in 350 oven, bake it, and I'll uh, bring it back out later and when it's all done. And I've done them two parts to it. So that's the way that I'm making meatloaf today. We have all kinds of different ways. And if you want me to get on later and do some apple fritters, just let me know. Uh, it'll be later. But I'm going to fix our dinner right now. And we have not eaten today. We got up real early this morning and watched uh, some things in Daniel, the 70th week. And we just watched a bunch of stuff to get educated. And then I fell back asleep. Anyway, here we are. We'll put the lid on that. I hope you're all having a great day. Okay, Margaret. These apple fritters are just, you'll never buy them in a bakery again. If you make these apple fritters, you'll never buy them. You'll make them. So, I will do apple fritters later Sunday, I promise you guys. So I'm gonna get our dinner ready and then I'll get things cleaned up and then later this evening, you know, I don't know what time you guys can watch it, but I'll make some apple fritters because I want to make some for Tom and me too because I'm kind of hungry for some. I used to make them and the grandsons would cut up all the apples for me. So I would make like three batches just so they could have enough to eat because they're so good. Baked apples. You did, Diane. That's something. We Isn't it, isn't it awesome how we live in different parts and we all have our different ways of eating. And I noticed this morning, I thought, you know, we use a little more sugar than some people in our stuff down here in MacArthur, Ohio. And mom always taught me that if you put, no grandma, if you put a little bit of sugar in um, your tomatoes and stuff, it makes them taste better, takes that acidity out of it. So that's why I use a little bit of um, you know, I know, uh, Kimberly, every time we would go uh, to church, we went to church in Waverly for three years. My son was a pastor and had a church over there. And we would stop and get a coffee and a donut on the way to church because we drove, I don't know how many miles it was. It took an hour or so to get there. And we, he would always get that big apple fritter. And I would always get something blueberry because I like blueberry. But... You know, he always loved them, too. And now I'm going to make him some. But I'm going to try to make them a little bit bigger this time. I made them about that big around. Because I, you know, I didn't want to make them too big. Yeah, I add uh, sugar to my to, uh, spaghetti sauce, too. And I add it when I can it. When I can uh, spaghetti sauce. Yeah, just a little will do it. Just a little bit. So we'll get busy and put this in the oven so I can feed my hubby and feed me because I'm getting hungry and I got to wait another hour for this to get done. So anyway, God bless you all and I'll see you later. And we will do some apple fritters. God bless you. I'll post a picture at the bottom.